Um, yeah, so uh, Vit actually came up with the with this title. So it's not my title; it's his title. Now I just had to fill it in. Um, uh, this is why I will first show a couple of slides about things which I'm not an expert on, and then uh, I will speak. So. There was a reason, I think, why he, he changed this title to, to this feature of 3D reconstruction, model-based 3D reconstruction, because the models and priors are coming more and more into 3D space. Um, when, when I mean 3D in this talk, I am not, I am not talking about um, some images and you get some 3D out of it. The real data itself is, will be 3D. Right. Um, but of course, the prior work includes that. So uh, there has been a lot of works uh, which are which are trying to capture the, the 3D uh, information by using the 3D information itself. So you have a model of the car and you try to reconstruct the car or you see such buildings and you know like, what buildings look more or less like. These are small geometric primitives, not small in this image, small. Um, and or, or you want to reconstruct a grape and you know that these grapes are kind of spherical or ellip ellipsoid shapes and whatever. Uh, so why not use that information, right? So this is this is the whole uh, this this talk is about. And I correct the title. <laughs> um, that is reconstruction via detection, uh, and this is a submission to ICCV now. Um, so you will be listening it before. Um, bit on myself. If so, these are my education. Quickly, uh, I did some startups. You can check them out if if you like. And then these are the companies um, which I have been affiliated with, either this way or that way. And as it was mentioning, I like that kind of stuff. Okay, so. I call this problem the Siemens problem uh, because you have an object like this, like this, which does anybody know what that is? Uh, it's a turbine casing. Um, it's the, you know, the turbines which they produce the energy from. And, and if you have a startup of, or if you have, you know, if you work small or with universities, you don't get access to an energy turbine out of nowhere. So that, 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 that is the reason I call this the Siemens problem. And that object is five meters long and five meters um, width, it has a five meter of, you know, of, of, of each dimension. Um, so how they do this? They basically take the material, just raw material, and, and kind of 3D print this thing. Um, they, they have the CAD model, and there's a process of milling, so they carve the shape out of this material. Um, and they, 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 they want to measure it on process, so that you know, they, they, they want to quantify the carving errors. If, if they are really over carving the thing, then they have to melt the complete thing down, and uh, you know, redo the whole process. So under carving is okay because you can always carve, carve a little bit more iteratively. Um, but yeah, so you get the idea. This is this is these are the things that I'm dealing with, unfortunately. Um, and this digitization of industrial objects, they require a lot of stuff. And be because it, it, high precision, this is the first thing. If you go to the industry, guys, high precision is the first thing. And then you have to be fully automated. I mean, you cannot hire 10 guys, you know, going around this thing all the time and trying to reconstruct it. You cannot take a Kinect camera and just walk around and hope that you get a reconstruction. It doesn't work like this. Um, and you want to have a real-time user feedback. You want to, you know, all these things which, which, which make an application an application. You cannot install markers. I mean, how many markers are you going to install on? So, you know, and there are a lot of challenges. This thing is big, it's specular, it's shiny, you know. There are clutter and occlusions. Some, 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 sometimes the, a car passes by, you know. Um, and the goal is you want to take a bunch of scans, not like this, these are very beautiful. Um, it's just in clutter and everything. And you want to get the shape out of it. So this shape out of it. This is, I know this is not familiar, but when you put these things together, really, that comes up. Uh, so yeah, given all these point clouds, and the, with, the, with the assumption that you have the CAD model now, um, the goal is to reconstruct this. And the scans look like that in general. These are laser scans. Some prior art, um, well, you know, 
there has been two branches of work, I would say. This is a very crude approximation of the reality, um, but let's summarize it that way. So you either take unordered scans and you try to fuse them together somehow. Uh, you know, like a scan-to-scan -scan registration, you can, you can extract features and then you can try to match them to one another. Or you can do volumetric methods like Kinect Fusion, where you assume that your sequence is ordered and you reconstruct within the sequence using sign distance fields and so on. Um, well, none of them includes the cat prior, obviously. So we want to use the cat prior and we want to kind of alleviate the problems which, which both of them have. Because if you have unordered scans, you kind of assume that there are no clutters or occlusions because they just, you know, mess up the, mess up the registration or, or matching. And here uh, you, you assume a kind of order and they are also outlier free, but anyways. Um, and in the, in the commercial arena, this is something which in the, the academia never talks about. Um, well, there are already solutions which, which you know, people buy. Um, and these solutions are, are kind of good. They have their good sides and bad sides. But you see that as, as every table, uh, they, they, they are lacking either, uh, you know, on, on, on certain aspects. And we are not lacking on all of them, obviously. Um, yeah. So, little bit of math. Um, I will I will talk more on the intuition of the problem than than complete math of it. So, um, and I I want from that stage on, um, please raise your hand. You know, it's it's better to have interactively. I guess I can I can finish early or I can skip slides. No problem. So, um, yeah. Basically, oh, we, take, we take a bunch of scans and we want to find a set of transformations such that these transformations bring those scans um, into, into, into alignment, right? And what is the assumption here? The assumption is that um, the, the, the shape we get is basically, um, it, it just depends on these uh, transformations. So we assume already that the quality of the scanner is good and we rely on it. That means you... If you have a Kinect, that is probably not the best. So I am not talking about Kinects now. I am talking about more stuff that actually give you good real data. Um, and we cast the problem in, into estimating transformations based on the model. So instead of estimating frame to frame or scan to scan transformations, you want to estimate transformations with respect to the model coordinate frame. Right, and transformations obviously something like that. Um, and here's the pipeline, which I will go over. You take an input CAD model from the industry, so it's really, really crappy. And uh, you, you kind of prepare it for good computer vision, right? And then uh, in the runtime, you have a bunch of scans, um, and you detect the CAD model within those scans. And this gives you a rough alignment. It's just a rough initialization. And then, of course, the CAD model is not, is not the real thing. It's not corresponding to the reality 100%. Therefore, you, um, you basically, after that initialization, uh, do a post-graph optimization. And there's a feedback cycle now to the user, um, and you can correct things. You can, you can make things better, or you can let the user make things better. And you cycle a little bit, and then you go to the, uh, to the actual optimization. And then, of course, you can mesh things, you can do other post-processing stuff, which I will not talk about. Um, to give you an idea, a laser scan gives you points in that range. So you have one scan, you have 100 million points immediately. If you have the second scan, you will have 200. And the accuracy is in 10 meter working distances, it's around one millimeter or two millimeters, so it's pretty good. Um, I'd already talked about the volumes that, that we have. We don't have RGB images. We don't want RGB images also. Um, only unstructured point clouds because the, the, we don't want to be... So if you think about the Kinect, it gives you a depth image. What's a depth image? It's basically the projection of the world into a plane. If you take it from the laser scanner, it's, it's the projection of the world into a sphere. So the underlying manifold changes, um, the, you know, this, uh, and, and we want to be invariant to this change. Therefore, we, we work directly on the unstructured point clouds and, and not also assuming that we have laser scanners. Um, yeah, so, and the CAD models are far from reality. You will see in the experiments, they can be quite far. Okay, so um, this, this comes in like that, in that form, with those vertices. 
so the goal is that you first take this thing and then you know prepare a better better CAD model. This is the first thing which which is quite unspoken, and I want to go over uh, how this is done. Um, this is one elegant work. What what you do is you create a Voronoi tessellation of the vertices, just that, um, but the, with the constraint that the Voronoi cells are uh, on the surface. So the cells are actually located like this over the surface. And then in, on top of this, you kind of uh, do a centroidal Voronoi tessellation. Um, you know, you basically iterate your vertices to create uniform vertex locations. I, I find this very elegant. It's beautiful. Um, but what it does, it always tries to generate a mesh. And, and it's, it's quite, it's not good because you can have internal structures, it treats everything equally, and so on. Um, so it, it generates such results. It's, it's beautiful. Um, but, yeah, as I said, it's elegant and so on, but not good. Um, therefore, we came up with another approach, um, which, is, which doesn't generate meshes. It just generates point clouds. But it generates point clouds from CAD models, um, which you can actually use in, in standard computer vision algorithms. Such you can extract 3D features out of it, for example. Um, oh, sorry, it was too fast. It's little animation I will speak through. So you basically have the CAD model, you, you render some uh, views on it, and those views uh, contain the coordinates. It is x, y, z coordinates here, and you sample those x, y, z coordinates in 2D, and this gives you a sample pool, and then you merge them in, in a voxel space. So you create a voxel grid, and then whenever this uh, point is close to any other point already added to the voxel grid, you don't add it, and you apply some uh, poson sampling and normal space sampling properties, and you get a nice, nice thing. Um, there is no mesh, but it's super good because you get rid of the internal structures immediately, and you gen generate uniform distributions and uniform normals. Um, and it's very simple to implement, really. It's just, you know, these operations are very simple. And you can generate such point clouds from meshes. So these are the original vertices. You see that there is uneven distribution, you know, and weird triangles here, and, but you can sample all of them evenly. It's simple. And for the big objects, it works like this. Okay. Now I come to the detection part. So we, now we want to detect the objects in the scenes before doing any, any optimization. Right, but before that, we, I want to talk about post-parameterizations. And I want to ask you, which post-parameterizations could you think of? I mean, what comes to your mind if I say I want to parameterize my post? Just raise your hand, like, don't be shy. Lee groups. Lee groups, right, okay. Sorry? Yeah, quaternions, um, good Lie algebra. Um, any other? Good, very good. And any other? Any other? Sorry? Yes, yes, sure. Uh, related to what he said, but yes, you can you can represent it mathematically in different ways. True. Um, okay, but see, this is this is the this is the thing. Of course, Euler angles, rotation matrices, quaternions, Rodriguez vectors, um, all the others. Um, but people don't think about this. People don't think about the view sphere. So you can actually represent your camera poses as integers on this view sphere. If you generate, if if you can actually map each camera pose to 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 one location in the in the sphere, right? You can model in plane rotation, so you can have uh, multiple points per vertex representing different locations, or you can just ignore them, and you would say first I want to estimate my uh, viewpoint ID. And then I want to estimate the, the, the angle. So it's basically two parameters. One integer, which is for the view ID, second integer for the in-plane rotation. Because this is around the, around the uh, viewpoint of the camera. This is not enough. Correspondences also give you pause, right? So, um, you know, if you have Corres full correspondences, actually, I would argue that this is a better parameterization than any of this. Because you are resolving the symmetry problem. Here, if you use a rotation matrix, any rotation of the object will, will, will be valid, which is actually valid, will give you a different, different transformation matrix. Whereas you, if you know the correspondence, you can really uh, constrain this. Uh, you, you, know, you know where the object gets transformed to. 
Um, but of course, we need three of them, uh, so it's it's almost almost like this. And um, here, I will think about a, a new newer post parameterization, which is if you are given a pair of oriented points, so two points with two normals, that constrains the full um, 60 poles. So this is a, if you think of it, it it's like a dual space approach in, back in the projective geometry days. Um, you have, like, you align one point, you know, with, with the normal. So if I'm aligning two things, like, like that, with the, with the normal, then basically only degree of freedom left is is, is the rotation around this normal, right? Um, which which I can uh, I can get from the second point. So um, this is this is this is all the things uh, that I need. And and here I will give you a method to actually do this very efficiently um, using this post parameterization. And what then I, I will have one integer for the model point, which which is pretty cool because I just have a thousand model points, right? Um, and the second one is is for the rotation around this normal. Okay, so, well, here's the outline. We have the CAD model and we extract some features and then with all these features we basically store in a hash table this post parameterization per point. And then this is our trained model. And then given, given a scene, we extract the same features and we look for, for our hash table, we look for, you know, how, how, how many of the points represent the poles in the same way as I stored it. And then uh, this is like a half voting in the end. And you get a rough clustering. Of course, this is a very simplified version. Um, you can refer to the papers if, if, if you want to read more about it. Um, and then you do an ICFP refinement. So it's like this. You take one point, pair it with all the other points, right? Think of this as a boosting approach. Um, you, you have the point pair features um, extracted from two points, but give anchored on one point, you basically have the uh, description of the full object, right? So this is a semi-local description. Uh, it gives you a local geometry from this point plus its relation to all, all the other points, which describe the object from the eyes of this point, if you want. So um, this is simple to, to do. And you just take this, you quantize it, and insert it to a hash table. That's it. Uh, this quantization, if you do it right, I, I I'll just skip this. If you do it right, it's it's uh, it also already comes with the sampling um, that that we have before. Um, so to search it, of course, here's our accumulator space now. To search a thing, you you basically extract the same features, and then you go to the model description, which is the hash table, and then you look it up. Uh, you look look up your pause parameterization, and for each vote, for for each pause, you cast a vote. Right? It's simple, um, and you have one uh, pause hypothesis per point, so you have to cluster them at the end. Right, so you have to do a post clustering, and post clustering comes with pause averaging, which then you can do in in a quaternion space, for example. Well, you have to treat down the puddle points here, but okay. And then, as I said, uh, each point gives you one pause. So each point on the model gives you one pause. Gives you one pause. So the the, the thing comes down to the fact that you have to verify all of this um, to actually you know, to, to come up with the correct thing. So the verification is simple. We store the distance transform um, of the model because we have the prior at hand. And every scene which is detected gets registered back onto the distance transform and therefore the correspondence search takes all one time. And this gives you a nice property that each um, Think each each verification. Sorry, this was uh, yeah. These are the equations if you want. But each each thing takes uh, takes about 0 0.8 milliseconds each registration. Okay. Um, yes, it's here. Yeah, and so you basically on a kinect image, for example, you have all these hypotheses and so on around coming, you know, from the post parameterizations, and you 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 do the registration with with the, to the model frame, and you come up with the with the last one, for example. Okay, and here are some detections on actual laser scans. Um, yeah, you can see it. So the, it's pretty cluttered. You see, it's just these points around, and and this is this is really a bad scene, I would say. And you can still get the object nicely. And 
given the object detection, of course, you can segment the object, right? This has been studied over and over in computer vision. And you can even do a very simple uh, sampling. Just take the ones which are close. Or you can also do graph cut approaches and so on. This really doesn't matter. Um, OK. Now we detected the object. We registered it there. We know that it's a good registration. And, uh, but, 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 we, but the CAD model wasn't really the, 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 the object, right? The, the CAD model is not the same as the scan. And then the next scan which comes um, can have a completely different registration. Well, not so off, but it's, it's, odd, odd, you know, it's, it's off enough. Um, so what we do is we, we detect this CAD model in the, in the scenes individually and then uh, disregard this CAD model. So we, we throw away the CAD model. We say that, OK, after, after that stage, I just want to rely on the scans and not the CAD model anymore. So the scans should be able to adjust themselves if the, if the scanning was consistent. Um, so this is the thing we do. We first compute a pose graph. Um, I, can, I can a little bit skip this part, maybe, to leave room for discussions also. Um, so we, we take all the, all, the, all the scans, and we discover the pose graph in the end from these scans um, just by looking at the overlapping histograms and kind of come up, coming up with a minimum spanning tree kind of algorithm on it and then we want given the scans and uh, so given the scans we basically want to find all the pauses right now now for, we go from the relative pauses the icp registration between scans this time um, to the absolute pauses and to do that uh, you just take a distance from each scan to each scan which which is which you encounter in your pause graph with a, with a robust norm and uh, you optimize this whole energy um, from the from the absolute pause, so this is this is what you do, and yeah, that I skip, and then from this initial registration, you can, for example, come down to a nice object, or for our case, which are these ugly objects, you can also do that, and I will show you results now. Um, so, any questions up to so, up to this point, or maybe later. OK, so we collect a couple of data sets. One is this toy objects. We 3D print CAD models because we want to verify them. We want to verify the correctness of the reconstruction. Um, printing accuracy, they claim, is pretty pretty good. I don't believe this, but this is what the printing companies claim. So um, The objects are generally 15 to 30 centimeters in, in, in the diameter. This is not much, but this is good enough maybe for some uh, initial evaluation. And we capture it with a nice structured light scanner, which Siemens produces. OK, so you see these are the objects. And then you see these. These are detected and segmented point clouds put in one coordinate frame, not the, the coordinate frame of the CAD model, which it is detected in, but on, on, the, on the frame of the initial camera. And then you, you, you run the optimization on this, and you come up with these results and, and, and error histograms. Um, I just want to show you a video if I can on how this works. Um, okay. Um, maybe I can even no. Okay. So you see that that I have a pretty cluttered scene here, and I have this Siemens sensor, and it's capturing the. You see. These objects in clutter over and over again, and at the same time, on the on, on that side, the object is detected. This is what the object we are seeking, and here you see the incremental reconstruction, which is rough, which is rough. I mean, for that example, the of course because the the, the model prior we are using is is more or less the same as the CAD model, um, the, the actual physical object. It looks pretty good already, but doesn't have to be. Yeah, um, not to bore you more. You get the idea. OK, so 13, 12 scans and three minutes of optimization, you come up with those results. And you can see that, for example, the eyes of the thing is, is, is apparent here, but, but is not there, and so on, if you want to look at the details. Um, and yeah, you have seen this. The rest I will show. OK, so some results, of course, we compare to the, to the previous methods, which are some methods on SDF fusion and Kinect fusion, because this is really easy to do. 
of course, it's not fair in the sense that they are not using the CAD models, um, but I can show at least that the CAD model improves this. Um, and then comes the industrial objects of, of Siemens, of course. Um, so these are the things. Uh, these are just the laser scans, typical laser scans with different parameters. You see the laser scanner here, what, what we are scanning, and this is like the reconstructions we can get from this. So I would say it it's, looks pretty decent. I mean, it's, Siemens found this acceptable, by the way. So. Um, uh, yeah, and this is the complete pipeline once again. It's just you take the CAD model, you prepare it, and then you have the scans, you match to them, you initialize the, your post graph and all that, and then uh, comes the reconstructions. And you then go back to the CAD model and compare how good I am doing. That's the whole purpose, right? You can even t read text. I, I, I think the, the CNNs nowadays can, can read it. And this is just 3D structure. And we compare it with the photogrammetry, which is pain in the ass. Um, you basically take these points and then you know stick markers around, and then you compare to the markers how how good your re reconstruction is. So this is a good thing to evaluate. And the, for this object, for example, it's in the range of one millimeter, the mean of this. And you can yeah, this is another reconstruction of a commercial solution. So. And this is ours. I think this looks sharper than, than this one. Uh, because it's also hard to process these things, right? There are a lot of points. And I understand why these guys are smoothing so much um, to get rid of certain points and eliminate, you know, average out close by points and so on. Um, and in interestingly, for example, when we, re when we reconstructed this object, there were markers. Um, and you can see that these are coming up in the reconstructions and they are they are lying here which says that you know they are off from the cat model of course they are off because they have been put by human hand there and for that thing you can get this result and you see it's a good reconstruction i think skip this part and you can also see when you compare that the, the manufacturer needs to carve a little bit on these green areas to come to the to the final shape. So far, of course, if you don't run on Kinect, nobody understands. So you have to show some Kinect images. And what we did was the following. We take the Kinect CAD model, and then we take our scanner and improve the Kinect reconstruction from the scanning, scanning that we did. And you see that even such a structure which is completely m missing here, but which is present in the CAD model that we used from Kinect, can be, can be recovered. So it's, it really converges well from from some arbitrary solutions. And you get much better reconstructions. Also here, like this, this prior couldn't recover that, that part, but we are okay. Still, we don't care much. And so on. And some timings. Um, the object detection is in the range of seconds. To, that, that is enough to give you the uh, real-time feedback, for example, and then the, to, for the refinement, and so on. Okay. Uh, there is no symmetric object handling. Um, the, the ways to recover from a bad detection is, has to be studied more. Uh, that, that's, that's, that's because there is really no way um, currently that I know um, that gives you 100% accuracy that says, hey, your reconstruction is now correct. It's, it's always a balance between precision and recall. Um, yes, and afterwards some meshing operations could be studied and so on. Okay, and that's it. Thank you. Uh, we have time for three, maybe four questions. Uh, I just spoke with one guy who told me what he had idea what you just showed it to the public. So probably, and he was very interesting. But ho hope he will he will talk after yeah, after. Sure. <laughs> right. Any anytime, approach me. It's, uh, Any uh, questions? Yes. Okay, I see. Uh, just wondering why connect by us uh, to compare uh, something up to date, real sense, tango, uh, you name it. Uh, just scanning one to three D. Why connect the reference? Um, so, which solutions would you suggest? Uh, 
uh, in the real sense, uh, which is Google Tango, uh, after desk 1, 2, 3D, and so on. Mm -hmm. Uh, sure, you can do that. I mean, there is no way to, there is no end to experimentation, right? Um, but do you think Google Tango is much, much better than Kinect? Yes, I tested. <laughs> uh, but but this is good for us, right? This is this is like um, so. The, that how in you mean compare in the sense that. Um, Okay, here, for example, right? We compare to other methods, um, and you you mean we should compare to compare in the data set of Tango? Yes, because uh, mm -hmm. Kinect is uh, 211 now a bit recreated, but not mm -hmm. like Volkinet that, but uh, Tango and uh, Real sure. are alive. Sure, but this is actually good for us. I mean, the, the 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 better the sensor we use, um, the, the the better our our, our algorithm runs, um, because you know this because we rely on the accuracy of the points. So running on Kinect is a disadvantage for our method, and here, the, the our CAD model comes from Kinect, and the, the the all these results are run on an industrial scanner which which we made in house, and it has 0 0.25 millimeter accuracy or so on. So it's all really better than Kinect on this. Can I one more? Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, did you compare with uh, uh, Steam VR Dars? With what? Uh, HTC Vive has base station with LIDAR scanners with accuracy 1.0 one, one millimeter. But again, that, that is favoring our method. Like, uh, yes, so uh, we didn't use that uh, explicitly, but we used laser scanners. And uh, so uh, this, is the, this is when the quality is bad. And the other things are when the quality is good. Actually, you are, if you are increasing the quality um, and you are making state of the art, we run better. It's it's we run worse on a on a noisy data set where for example the SDF like methods average it out. Right? We do not do any averaging and therefore this noise on the points themselves are bad for us. Okay, thanks a lot. Sure. Thank you. We have a second question. Okay, thank you so for thank you for your speech. Uh, I have sure. I believe I, I got all the steps uh, in the process, and but to have a kind of glue for that, to have a whole picture, could you please uh, provide an use case? I believe uh, that is evident that comes from industry, right? So what is what is a use case? Uh, a use case, right? but I, I, I thought I provided this. Okay, I should be more clear than that. Um, So the use case is this one. So, so one? I, I, I mean, uh, is the task in this use case t is an estimation of external camera parameters or refining the model? Uh, no, you That's want to. So they they manufacture this by looking at the CAD model, but they do a bad job, and they, therefore they want to quantify how bad they did and how much they should improve. Yeah, got, got it. And, and uh, therefore, they want to in, in, introduce this measurement cycle in the loop while this is uh, being manufactured so that you iteratively measure, refine, measure, refine, measure, refine. And measuring this is every time different because the operator goes there, puts a cup, places a couple of laser scanners, and just shoots these objects from the five angles. Right? That's it. Yeah, clear. Thanks. Okay. Can I use it? Yeah, I say, can I use this for construction, for example? Same for reconstruction. Construction. For construction, yes. Yeah. Uh, so another uh, department who was interested was the power plant guys. Okay. So they want to reconstruct the whole power plant, okay. and they have a model of the whole power plant, by the way. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes, I have a question. So how do you evaluate the accuracy of the method since you are using the CAD model? Yeah. In the reconstruction process, what is the correct methodology? This is very debatable. <laughs> but, but uh, therefore, we wanted to do this. Photogrammetry ah. is the most accurate measurement that I know, which is 
you know, which is able to verify this kind of accurate reconstruction. So you have the CAD model, you do the reconstruction, but then you go to the real scene and with the ruler yes. and, and measure these, these points. These, no, these are automatically measured. So we take uh, around 180 shots of this uh -huh. and then do a sparse point reconstruction. So each oh, circle is mm -hmm. sub-pixely identified okay, here okay, and then okay. triangulated from this 30 or 40 cameras. Key, key, key points, yeah. Yes, um, and these are accurate key points if you want. So we compare to that. I don't know, if you if you know any other method, just you can suggest. Uh, uh, you have sh uh, you have shown on the slides the user interaction in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. Is it placement of cameras or is it actually dragging the models? And also, uh, it seems so. Do you have some like fancy UI or is it, is it like mouse dragging on a laptop? And also, it seems like a perfect use for VR-based UI. Have you thought about it? Um, good question. So, it, how I feel is, is is the following. So when when, when you know. Typical computer vision researchers hear about this problem. It's hard to imagine in the sense that imagine yourself in a factory now, right? You go there and then there is this big thing standing and you have a laser scanner in your hand and that takes half an hour to take a picture. Now, if you take a laser scan and, and this big thing, you know, which looks like it can fall down, you place the laser scanner and you, you go away, you take a shot and then and then you, did, you place the laser scanner there, and already one hour passed. Do you, do you really want to go to the lab, try a reconstruction, ah, oh, this didn't work, you know, if I shot it from that side, it, it could have been super nice. You know, and, and you don't want to do this. What you want to do, you want to see online whether the, the thing that you captured is usable or not. And usability in this case is if, if I can detect the object and register it very nicely at this position, then it's probably usable. It's not bad. Um, and this is what you want to see while scanning. That's why in, in the results, like this, this timing reaches minutes, this op global optimization, clearly. Um, it can even, I have seen 10 minutes or so on. I, I would say these numbers would, would even remain optimistic. Um, but oh, the object detection doesn't go far from this. So uh, it, it's always in that range. So you take a shot of half an hour, and then three seconds is like a bliss, you know. It's like, wow, okay, already three seconds, so I, I, I get a result, I can view it on the, on the screen. That's, that's the user feedback, and according to that, the user decides whether he wants to take another shot or another shot from another position and so on, until he's and, satisfied. And the reconstruction is fully automatic, so user does not participate. Exactly, okay. yeah, it okay. is. It is just, but uh, you just need to wait a little bit. Yeah. More questions? Okay, and I know a lot of people want to talk with you after this, of yeah. the record. Okay, yeah. sure. sure. Uh, thank you very much. And, Thanks a lot. Uh, yeah. Thanks a lot.